Hey guys, this is Vasil from the B-Dance. Welcome you in a YouTube studio. Today I'd love to talk with you about three Bs. And you may be like, three Bs? What the heck is three Bs? Well, there are different types of Bs. You see, there are like honey bees, there are carpentry bees. And then I discovered the other month that there is also a blue bee. And scientists thought that it was extinct, but they did discover it in Florida. It's not extinct yet. It still exists. There is, there is such a thing as a blue bee. And I like the term blue bee so much that I made a little song about it. It goes like this. This is a blue bee. This is a blue bee. <laughs> so, so it's like very basic song, but it's stuck in my mind because I found it so inspiring. And sometimes now when I get, get bored, sometimes the song resurfaces, resurfaces in my mind. This is a blue bee. So like three bees, what we talk about here? Three, three bees. But it will spell it like this. Three letters bees in this case. So the first, the first B is the name of the company, B Dance. So B Dance, B Dance. So here's the first B. Then the second B is uh, is Bloom's taxonomy. So second B we have Bloom's Bloom's. Taxonomy. So here's another B. And the third B is the basis. It's like basis in tax. So here's basis. Basis. Because in taxation, basis is very important. Before you tax something, you got to know what your tax basis is. What's the amount at risk? What's the invested amount? It's a, it's a, it's a tax. It's a tax term, but in taxation, it's super important. What is your basis? So this is the third B. So what do three of these Bs have in common? B dens, Bloom's taxonomy, and basis. Well, we we have to we have to start with some basis or a baseline. You go to any assessment. So you're supposed to go to strength training. Right now I am I am I have a coach for strength training because in four plus years of fitness I realized yeah my fitness is great, I love this, but strength, but in the area of strength, strength is my weakness. So I say strength is my weakness, which sounds funny. Because they're usually you, you you have both, you have trade-offs, so strength can become a weakness sometimes. So like <laughs> Even saying like strength is my weakness is funny, but like meaning strength training area is my weakness. So I'm, I've been focusing on that. So my coach tells me, okay, let's do functional, functional measurements, see your baseline and things like that, because he wants to see the basis to, to, to establish the baseline. So we like working, working with, with any client. It's like, I need to know like, what's the baseline? What are we starting with? What's our starting original? position and then then when we talk about B dense so we see this part B and we have this part dense so when we talk about bees we automatically think about ecosystems and about the role that they play in the ecosystems uh, pollination and the effect on crops and harvests and feeding our planet essentially so we think we just see the term b and we can think oh yeah just these little creatures but as we think deeper we see the associations and feedback loops and how it all interplays in the in the ecosystem so we think about bees and what they mean we often tend to conceptualize through the lens of what it really means for us and then we have dense so it implies activity. If we, if we want to produce something, we cannot be static. We must be active. Even consider the word currency. Currency comes from the way current. And current is constantly moving. So likewise with money for, for, for it to build, to bring profit, we say 
money makes money. We've got to move them around. We've got to invest them correctly. We've got to leverage them. If they're just sitting, it goes under against the very nature of money, of the like, currency, which comes from the word current, constantly moving. So you see we have this part dense that tells us that life is about motion. I mean, it's, it's like taking, so if we think about taking care of our bodies, so we, we exercise, we make sure we, we eat well, we sleep, so that we can maximize our optimal, uh, maximize our performance and productivity, so that we can help full to people, so that we can bring a positive impact in the society. So it ends that moment, like life is moment. So like, and then be dense, like be in the constant state of dance. When we talk about business and the word is negocio in Spanish, meaning negotiations. We negotiate with our customers, with the suppliers, with the employees, with the government, with everybody. So I feel that the Spanish term nego negocio captures the essence of business much better than business because it's come from the word busy. The, so, so the word in English, business, comes from the word busy. So it, it doesn't really capture the essence well because you can be busy but not productive, busy not adding value, busy and not innovating. So it's, I, I don't really like that word capturing the essence, but negocio, coming from negotiate, I think it's a beautiful capture of the essence of, of business because it is mainly about negotiating, about dancing, about dancing and negotiating with everybody. So if you talk about bees, what other associations come to mind, like cross-pollination? So I use a green one because I talk about crops and harvest, so let's use a green one. So here is like cross-pollination. So cross-pollination, what do we mean by cross-pollination? So the bee goes to one flower and she gets some pollen, pollen from there, some pollen and nectar from there. Then she goes to another flower and she drops some of the pollen from the previous flower on another one. Talk about cross-pollination. Cross then what does it mean for, for uh, like when we are dialoguing with each other, we have a term cross-pollination of ideas because one person's interest can be in this area, another person's interest can be in another area. But when we are dialoguing and go back and forth, we can really get enriched through that cross-pollinations of ideas, so to speak. So that's, that's another, so that's another association. And then, you know, like we talk about, we talk about the process of the bees collecting uh, pollen, pollen and nectar, and whatever whatever they produce, and then they, you know they ultimately uh, produce honey. So whatever they produce in the current, they gather and produce in the current period. Say, in the current honey producing uh, season cycle, it's like an income statement. But whatever they accumulated in the beehive, that's like a balance sheet. So that's 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 another that's another connection to accounting. So so that's the associations with the bee dams. Then we talk about Bloom's taxonomy. So Benjamin Bloom is known as the father of the American pedagogy of the American education system as as far as somebody who came up with the conceptual framework of what it means for us to learn. And we all remember times at school when the teacher was explaining something and we were totally not getting the concept. Like, what's going on? It was totally about our head. And then we had to go home and figure out what's going on, just or ask a friend or ask a tutor, figure out some other way to make it work because the way teacher was explaining in the classroom was either not connecting with us, or it was about our head or, or whatever. So we had to say, okay, what is my basis? What is my baseline? I don't get this and this system doesn't work. I'm not getting it from my teacher. 
So perhaps I go to somebody else, like find a tutor who can explain it to me differently. Maybe I read it myself, or maybe I am working with my study body, and my study body helps me. So you see, sometimes this person may not be the right fit in explaining that to you, because the way the person is explaining something, it's just not connecting with you. So we have to change it around and figure out the way that will bring you results, that will get you to understand. So Benjamin, Bloom's, uh, Benjamin Bloom created what's known as Bloom's taxonomy. And you know, it's like taxonomy in, in biology. When you, we talk about, uh, when, when, when you talk about your, your, your kingdom, class, then you, about family, you go all the way to the individual species. So you have, that's called like taxonomy or classifying different living organisms into nice classification systems. So that word is more of a biologic term, taxonomy, uh, categorizing into classes. But it, he used the same term in educational system. He called his, his, his system became known as Bloom's taxonomy. So in this Bloom's taxonomy, there are levels of us acquiring understanding and of us learning increasingly more and better and qualitative better. So the first level in Bloom's taxonomy, so the first level is uh, remembering, remembering material. So this is le level one, just a just plain retention of an absorption of information on the mechanical level, remembering. Then the second level is we go from remembering to understand. Go to understand. And you see, there are six levels in this taxonomy, but that's where most of us stop. Is like between remembering and understanding some concept. And you know, it's similar to how most people are stuck between anger and fear. And they don't get into inspiration or faith-based, vision-based living. But it's like 90% or so people are stuck between just two emotions, fear and anger, and just not being able to grapple or find the way beyond it. The same way as in learning, most, most of us are stuck between remembering and understanding somewhere. But then let's see what are the other levels? What are the higher levels of learning? So after understanding, we can move to applying something. We can say, okay, I retain the information in my memory. I understand it. Now let me try to apply it in my life. So there is not just some abstract knowledge, but I actually get to apply it. And I'll give you a case in point, you know, like I meet, I meet a lot of different people at different events and so on. And then I want to reach out to them, but then I get busy and I don't. So what is there? Like I met people at nice networking events, but I'm not reaching out to them. And then, you know, thankfully, eventually, you know, like ask my assistant to help me to reach out, schedule some Zoom calls with them. So that information is useful, that I'm collaborating, I'm building a relationship with these people. Otherwise, it just knows in my, <laughs> in my phone. Yeah, like I remember the face. I understand it would be useful to collaborate and build with this person. <laughs> but I'm not applying, you know, it just knows in my phone. So we cannot profit unless we implement. So like, thankfully, my, my, uh, my assistant, my assistant, Cherry, is helping me with the, uh, with the outreach. And I'm very grateful to her because it's a very valuable function. She helps me actually implement that. So, okay, we talk about applying. And then, then the, fourth, the fourth level is analyze. The fourth level is analyze. We analyze, we analyze, uh, how can we analyze? We can segment the data to make sure we are comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, and we're not comparing apples to oranges. So that's why in accounting we have the term called segment reporting. We segment data and say, well, we cannot just compare this data set of one company to another one because it means different things for different companies. 
let's make sure we do a correct segment reporting that we compare the correct the sets of data according to the on the same criteria we're comparing apples to apples so we analyze what it would be split in buckets you know in taxation it can be ordinary income or uh, capital or capital gains and we, we are making sense we are, we, we, we are analyzing that information then the fifth then the fifth level is evaluate And when, when we evaluate, we say, okay, based on, uh, on this analysis, we narrow it down to certain options, to a range of options. And we say, uh, which one would be better for my business? Should I take, or for, for my personal life, should I take this option or this other option would be better? We evaluate our options, we are weighing them. And then the sixth final level we create, we create something totally brand new. So this is the sixth level, is uh, create. And the, the way the Bloom's taxonomy work, works is actually built, built as a triangle. It's something like this. And you see like creation, like, Creating something new is like the pinnacle. It's like a North Star. Because when we look at the triangle, you know, I think it's like the triangle ultimately reaches to the pinnacle. So the question is, what is a North Star? What is the pinnacle? It's actually not be stuck on these two levels here. But the question is, how do we move up on this ladder, on this learning ladder, all the way to create something new? So what's the connection with the B? I really like Francis Bacon's quote, and you saw some of, of, of uh, some of you saw it on the website that says that the end is uh, about collecting collecting information, gathering data. So it's more like remembering here, like data input, heavy data input function, and then Spider creates the web. But it's sometimes, sometimes, like, he gets stuck in his own web, in his own thoughts, and doesn't go past that. But the bee, Francis says, is a very unique creature because it actually gathers and collects, but then it processes through her system and creates a brand new product, honey. So you see, we talk about reaching this creation level, synthesizing a totally new product. So, when we, when we, uh, uh, when when, when I, I worked for a company called LTC Health Solutions in uh, South uh, South Carolina, and the company was was like LTC, and the and the uh, and LTC Health Solutions is is a very cool company. And they, you know, like have like very creative. They really take care of their patients. They have a SC house calls where nurses come to your home to take care of you. But anyway, they abbreviated long-term care to LTC. And then Jamie Williamson, who is the head of their LTC university because they provide apprenticeship programs to their, to their employees, he, he came up, he said, hey, uh, LTC can actually mean... Uh, live, teach, create. And I really connected to that definition because like it became one of my mottos in life. Live, teach, create. So we talk about live, teach, and create. But you see how we, how we also end here with create? So you see we, we're here at this sixth level. So you see that's that's a goal. How do we eventually move to 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 understanding the situation, uh, analyzing it so deeply and well, to evaluating the options, so that we synthesize a brand new strategy specifically for this particular situation. But we but you know basis gives us the baseline. You know, like what's a starting point.
and uh, when um, I had a conversation, I had a conversation with the, with one guy the other day, and you know he he was confused about the his filing requirements because originally he just wanted to create an LLC, but then he realized that for that technology company, it would be better to create a corporation. So he changed that, and then you know some years he he incurred some startup expenses. And then, you know, two years later, he's somewhat confused about the final requirements and cannot make heads and tails of it. So it's, it's just confusing for people who don't work in the tax area what's going on. So now if originally I started with that, but then I fixed that and I changed it to corporation and it's like, what's going on now? So I help him understand that yeah, you know, the original thing was the error correction. So, you know, we treat it as a corporation first. So, because eventually he still went back and changed from corporation to LLC. But then to fulfill the filing requirements, his company has to file two corporate returns, which he was for the first two years, and then you know, attach the um, and then th then attach a statement with the 2023 return stating that the that the entity changed from from corporation to the LLC and you know but it's when we when 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 we when we work with clients it's trying to understand and analyzing what's really going on because before before advising anything because before advising the client and anything we got to have a very good baseline and in taxation it has its own meaning of the invested amount or at risk amount minus depreciation and things like that but so that's in taxation it's super important but in general like what's the What's the bottom line? What's the functional, the initial functional measure? What are we talking about? Before we can really do or advise anything, we must have really thorough knowledge on where the client is. Because often the client does not know how to articulate that well, or doesn't know what he is exactly looking for. So it's similar to life, think about it this way. So like we ask somebody, how are you? And most people say, good, thanks. But then you say, how are you really doing? So that way, you know, like usually asking the first question is not enough because the first question would be, would be very surface level. But when we ask additional questions and ability to ask questions and having the dialogue will help to know the underlying drivers. Because if the person wants to solve a tax problem, it's not just solving a tax problem. What is this person ultimately trying to achieve? It's like peace of mind, better relationship with the spouse, invest that money for the daughter's or son's field trip or travel, just getting, not having to live under the rock again, going back to the, to the fullness and abundance of life. So it's connecting with those emotional levers that really drive and motivate us. Because if we cannot connect with those motivators, then, you know, it will be hard to work like that. The client is not motivated to get it. But if we can help the client to get emotionally invested in the process and in the result, then that's when we can achieve the biggest bang for a buck. I talked, I talked with, uh, with one with one financial coach the, the other day and he, he shared that one of his clients, uh, one of his prospects uh, told him, ah, I'm not sure, he was a kind of on the verge that he needed uh, to accelerate his profit, and, um, but he wasn't exactly sure. So this coach asked him, uh, what percentage readiness are you, percentage-wise, how ready are you? And the guy said, uh, maybe like 80%. So this coach said, well, now go back when you're 100% ready, come back and we'll work together. 
because I am 100% invested in helping you. So, you know, it goes back to the saying, when a student is ready, a teacher appears. And you can see it in Karate Kid. Remember when that, when the boy wants to learn karate, and he asks his coach, hey, teach me. The coach says, no, no, I'm not going to teach you. So, like, the boy has, like, to beg him to teach him, doesn't understand why, what's going on. But the teacher's point was, you are not ready. You know, you cannot even, you come home, you throw your jacket. You, 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 you don't have, you don't show enough responsibility and initiative. But eventually he did get to that level, but he had to be mentally ready to be 100% invested in his success. Because if the client is 100% invested in his success and is going to cooperate with a professional to solve the problem, you know, to engage in that dance between the client and the professional, in that dialogue, in getting to the best synthesized strategy here to the top level, moving from the first level all the way to the top level. That's, that's how we build value. That's how we make for win-win scenarios. So that's, uh, so here's your summary here. We talk about three Bs today. And it's B dance, Bloom's taxonomy and basis, and how it all connects. I hope it was helpful to you. Please subscribe to the channel if you like it, and please comment what other topics you, you would like you would like me to talk about, what topics would be interesting for you to engage in. Because it goes back, the idea is to make it helpful for you, not just me here talking, but to make it helpful and build value. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Cool bees.